Hey guys, welcome back to Predatory Fins. I'm here with this boy, Ryan. High five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, it's actually nighttime, you know, like always when we're here, but we had to come back in for one reason. I want to show you this guy back there, just because just I want to show off a little bit. It's all the way on the other side already. What? So I got an extra Armadas. That one is about 14 inches and we're definitely gonna keep them. I'm not gonna sell them, I'm not gonna get rid of them. That's a show piece that we're gonna um, eventually have to move with us when we move up north. Now talking about that, we are moving, you know, we still have to go because mainly um, we wanna be in a state that allows us to expand pretty much doesn't have much restrictions like Florida. Florida has a lot of restrictions and I understand why, but for the type of business that we're doing, we're better off just going somewhere where it's easier to um, deal with this type of animals. So that being said, we're not gonna be able to set this up. I know a lot of you guys are waiting for the video of us setting up the drum filter, but I just wanted to show you the inside so you can see what it looks like as well. And I have to hold Ryan on this video because he's crying. So, welcome to parenthood or fatherhood. Ready? Look at that, Ryan. I'm gonna put you in there and wash your diapers. So, this is the drum filter I was talking about. Basically, it rotates on its own. And once it clogs up, there's jets on this gray bar over here that sprays all over the screen and it washes itself. So. What that does is you never have to clean your filter, which is amazing. That's the dream for any fish keeper to have something like this. So we're gonna take this with us. Uh, most likely take all these tanks as well because I don't think it would be possible for us to run two stores, especially if we're gonna be living up north. So it's gonna be very difficult to do both. And uh, my family wants to move to Orlando, you know, so I don't know, we're, we're not probably not gonna Unfortunately, you know, for everybody in Florida, uh, we might not be in Florida any longer. But this is probably gonna happen at the beginning of next year. That being said, now I'm gonna go to the other bad news. The reason why we came is because we imported those last Columbia shipment and all the fish came in really good. But the main ones that I brought that I was trying to grow them out because you don't really see them for sale in a hobby at the size that they came in, is the Armadas, right? And they're doing really well. I'm feeding them live fish. So today, Jordan texted me and said that there was four dead ones, all right? So this is good for you guys at home to also realize things like that can happen. When I came in, I sat over here for about 10 minutes while Lisa was feeding Ryan, and I started trying to understand why there were dead ones. I put the food, a lot of them went for it, but Payaras are very aggressive fish, and I realized that there's some weak, skinny ones that still haven't eaten since they came in because the stronger, more powerful ones were not allowing them to eat. They were kind of like blocking them from getting the food. So there were some of them that were not getting any food from day one. Like, let me see, this guy right here, you see his belly is super skinny. So I'm gonna show you guys what I had to do to save these fish from dying because even with live, they're not eating. And that's probably something that if you buy a fish that just came in from the wild, you might have to do things like that as well. And that's why, that's the whole purpose of this video. I already separated a couple of them here and you can see they're kind of like sideways, not doing very well. All right, so check it out. See, a lot of these guys are still very skinny. Even though there's food in the tank, they're not really eating. So this is what I'm gonna do. And this is what I had to do when I got here and I figured I would film it so you guys could see it. And maybe you can try this at home as well and be able to save some of your fish. This is a big feeder right here. I hate to do this, but Fortunately, we have to, so. Right there, I got the feeder ready. I'm gonna pick one of the bigger ones because that's a big feeder. I think they're all pretty big. This guy looked like he ate already. Let's take this one. Okay, so we gotta be very careful 
because pyaras have huge fangs and you don't want to let them bite you. But hold on, come up because I just did legs and my, you know, my legs hurt. Basically what I gotta do is, oh, I gotta open his mouth. No, hold on. I gotta just force him to, there you go. And I gotta shove the feeder in there. Get him some water. Okay, there you go. All right, watch this. And I'm sure all the fish are gonna be almost the same way. You just have to practice with different fish. Okay. I don't wanna put my hand in there. I just gotta push down his throat. There you go. So it's going. So see how the tail is there? Mm -hmm. But he's, little by little, he's gonna swallow it. And then hopefully we can get him to full health. Now, if I had seen this when they first came in, you know, like, okay, there was food in there, but they're not really eating, then I would have done this a lot faster. But let's do another one, just so you guys can see. Try a smaller feeder this time. This dude look over like he already ate. So basically that's why they were dying because they were so skinny. And like I said, even though we were power feeding them, the stronger ones were not allowing the skinny ones to eat. So first it can get a little slippery. All right. Precision. See like they're so weak, they're not even moving. Come on, open your mouth. I know, sorry buddy. For your fish, huh? Okay. Dude, All smooth. the way in, gone. That one still got the tail in his mouth. I think that feeder was too big. I might have to push. No, he's swimming. Are you swimming because you're good, or you swim because you're bad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe he's asking for help. So let's see. That feeder was a fat one. Let me push it a little bit deeper in there. Come on. Oh. Dude, this feeder is like huge. Can you close your mouth? I know. I'm just wondering if this one, because the feeder was so big. I can't. I'm wondering if he's choking, so I'm just gonna push it all the way through. I'm sure that feels weird. So see, if I had caught this a day earlier, I think I could have saved a lot more fish. But you can try this technique with arowanas, uh, peacocks, even frozen, it's just, I've been doing the live because they have all the nutrients that the fish need, you know what I mean? But when I, when we got here and Lisa was taking care of Ryan, there was a four or five one that was sideways and I'm looking at it right now and all of them are standing up. I know he takes a little bit of time, but you know, he ate, I can see his belly. So let's take this guy right here. I'll do one more for you guys to see. See, flat belly, there's nothing in there because the other fish weren't allowing them to eat. So open the mouth. I know, sorry buddy. All the way. That that went all the way in already. Oh, yeah. I brought it back out to life. Yeah, look at those fangs. See all the gills coming out? I mean, all the gills, the, the scales. So guys, that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to sit here and literally babysit this fish, feed him like that. You know, all the ones that are skinny that I can find, I'm gonna have to do it, otherwise they won't make it. So this is a good thing to know. You know, even though you're putting food in your tank, something might be wrong, whether uh, 
there's a fish that's spooking your new fish or he's afraid of the tank mates and he's not gonna eat. And that's what was happening with these pyaras that are weaker. Now, if you come over here, you can see a lot of them are already fat and healthy because they're the ones getting all the food and they're not allowing. Oh. I was gonna do a prank. I almost pranked myself. They're not allowing, look at, look at their bellies. They weren't allowing the other ones to eat. So I'm gonna go ahead to feed them again today. Power feed everybody. And all the ones that are just sitting there, I'm gonna have to shove food down the throat and get them to full health again. Oof, it's hot in that room. But I think that's it. I just wanted to show you guys that when you do have a new fish, it's important to pay attention to that fish and see if he's eating, see if he's doing well, because a lot of times it could, like I said, it could just be tank mates making him afraid to get his food. And next thing you know, your fish is dead. And you thought the whole time that he was eating, but in reality, he really wasn't. What do you keep looking over there, oh, Ryan? He's, he's good, he's good, Shh, he's good. But I think this is gonna be a short video. I just wanted to show you guys this, you know, a technique that you can try that at home. It's always good to have those what do you call those, the long tweezers? Oh, of course. Yeah, and you can put medicine inside of that fish and then shove it inside. Or you can try with shrimp and other stuff. But like I said, I like to do the, the feeders because he has all the nutrients. While we're here, we might as well just show you the surgeons that we have. We have the little ones that came in. They're about five to six inches. We're putting them on the website today. And then we have the Sturgeon, the albino ones as well, the diamonds and the albinos. And we're gonna be getting some of these guys. Let's keep, go back outside, it's too hot over here. We're gonna be getting some of, taking the building down. Talking about taking the building down, this is gonna suck to move, right? Yeah. Like, honestly, I'm not looking forward, I'm looking forward to the move because I like challenges, but that one, ha, huh, you, know, you remember what happened last time we got that tank here, so. That one is actually gonna be easier because it's one piece. This, I'm gonna have to take it all apart and it's gonna be cut in half before it can be taken out of here. The big one is gonna be the biggest challenge because that one came in in eight pieces. So we literally have to take the whole thing apart. And, but before we do that, we have to move all the fish and get the water out. So we have to have something set up. Most likely, we'll probably set up some swimming pools up there get the fish acclimated. I'm probably gonna have to drive a truck with big containers to uh, take some of these fish. So it's gonna, be, it's gonna be an interesting beginning of uh, 2022 for sure. Wow, you know, but that's, just, that's what we do. 2021, we started with, with the baby. Now we're starting 2022 with a new facility. That's what's up. But before I forget, because I talk a lot, let me show it to you guys. We're gonna have some of these guys available. And these are the super white diamond sturgeons. If you are interested on any of these, let me know. Right. And I'll probably put some on the website as well, but they're not. Um... It's better to put a picture up, it's not focusing. Oh, it's not focusing on the video? Yeah, it's mm. They kind of look like, like the, 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 the they're more white. They have a lot more white on them. It's like the super white. There we go. Diamondback. Or black. What were they called again? Diamondbacks, Diamond right? Back, yeah. yeah, the super, the super white diamondbacks. This is actually a really nice one. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for uh, what the future might bring us. That being said, we're probably gonna have to sell our stock because we have to move. And I don't wanna bring all this fish up there. So I'm sure we're gonna be doing sales uh, pretty soon. And um, who knows, you my guys might be able to get some good deals, all right? Love everybody, we gotta take a ride home, and I'll see you next time. Next time.